الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقرة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today, inshallah, we shall continue with our discussion for yesterday, yesterday's topic actually regarding the gold mine of conduct from Surah Al Hujurat, which we said is Quran chapter 49, and it has 18 verses in the whole of the Surah, and it is within the 26th juz of the Quran. Today we're going to look at verse number 13. And verse number 13 says, Ba'da a'udhu billahi minash shaytan ar-rajim Ya ayyuha nas inna khalaqanakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum inna Allahi alim al-khabir He says, O mankind, look at the contrast here. Yesterday, when it was talking about teaching the believers the manners, it says, Ya ayyuha ladina aman. Now, in this particular verse, it says, Ya ayyuha nas. Allah is basically talking to everybody who is a human being, and not only Muslims. And there is a message here I will going to explain shortly. It says, Ya ayyuha nas, O mankind. Indeed, we have created you males and females and we have made you into tribes and nations. Why? So that you may know one another. And Allah says Verily, the most higher in rank on the side of Allah is the best amongst you in piety. In Allah Alimun, indeed Allah is all knowing, Khabirun, all aware. And this verse tells us basically men and women are the same on one level. But that's definitely when it comes to differences between you know men and women. In the western part of the world, they say there is equality. What, ma what men can do, women can do even better. Even with that, we don't agree to put man and woman in the same boxing ring. All right? But Islam, as far as Quran is concerned, and as far as the message of Allah is concerned, issues about justice, we deal with justice or we can get justice based on equality or equity. Equality or equity are two things that lead us to have justice. Now what is equality and what is equity? Equality as simple as whatever you give to A, you give to B. If you give A 1,000, a male, you give B 1,000. Now. In Islam, when it comes to good deeds and committing sins, when you have good deeds, whether male or female, you have the same reward. That's equality. And Allah says, you will not be cheated on that. It's captured in many verses. One is in Surah Nahal. Right? Allah says in Surah Nahal, whoever is a good person and has done righteousness, male or female, that whoever has done righteousness, right, male or female, who are mu'min and is a believer, then we shall give them the full reward in this dunya, and in akhirah they have a better recompense. Again, when you look at other verses in the Quran, similar things have been mentioned. Allah says, "Inna al-Muslimina wal-Muslimat wal-Mu'minin wal-Mu'minat." Until the end, He says, "Aad Allah lahum." Meaning, there is equality also here. Whether male or female, Muslim, male or female, 
a believer, male or female, the one who does, who does a song, male or female, you all have great rewards, equality. Now, where then comes the issue of equity? Equity comes in when we are dealing with responsibility. And the matter of, matters of responsibility are grouped into two men. It depends on what we think and how we feel. And when you look at every human being, these two organs make you who you are, your brain and your heart. The brain and the heart makes us who we are. If you take it from one person and put it in my imam here, he's going to behave exactly like him. Why is it so? Because the brain has a particular function we call the cognitive power. And the heart has a function which we call the affect or affective power. Now the cognitive power helps us in simplifying complex issues. Affect helps us in being sympathetic and having empathy. But in the gender, both male and female, the cognitive power and the affective power are different. In the male gender, there is 70% of the cognitive power and 30% of the affect or the emotional. The direct contrast is for the female gender, where you have 30% in the cognitive power and 70% in the affect. And based on this, it says that when a person is married, then he is able, he has been able to attain the other half of his religion, according to the hadith of the prophet. What does that mean? It means when you get married, you bring your 70, your wife brings the 30, 100% cognitive power in the family. And you bring your 30% emotional or affect, she brings how many? 70. So there is going to be 100% cognitive and 100% emotional and therefore when a child is born in that particular environment you realize that he grows up with both equally and he becomes an upright person again when you look at the cognitive power the prophet muhammad وسلم, has mentioned in a hadith before the westerners were not happy with that hadith they said that the prophet has insulted women when the prophet says about women that women are less in terms of their cognitive power and deen in the religion because in the religion because of menstrual cycle they cannot pray continuously for one whole month right compared to a man similarly in terms of the cognitive power they said no how can your prophet be so discriminatory but in reality it was not discriminatory it was actually some kind of complementary complementary kind of analysis they complement each other, both male and female. So you see, there is 70 here for you, but you have 30 here. So in terms of emotion, you are a bit less as a man. That's why when a man has a baby and the baby is crying, he can tell the wife or the mother, hey, your baby is crying, I want to sleep. You know, it's not his baby in that situation. Hey, baby. <laughs> you see, now that is, that is the situation. So we have 70, 30, 30, 70, making it 100. And therefore, based on the cognitive and the affect, when we are to make just dealings, we don't go by equality, we go by equity. And by equity, we realize that because men have 70% cognitive power, Allah plays a whole lot of responsibilities on the shoulders of men. And Allah says in Surah Al-Nisa, Ar-Rajal Qawamuna Ala Nisa. Men, Ar-Rajal, men, have qiwama. Qiwama means they are the ones who are responsible for the family. They are responsible in everything. For what Allah has made them better within their kind of you know responsibilities given to them. And what they have given out of in fact, which is to say by nature men give and by nature women take. And when men give by nature in everything. Just mention, everything you give. And women by nature are receivers. So therefore, when you want a woman to be the one to feed the family, after one or two days, she gets tired. And even if you feed the family for 15 years, and for only one month or one week, you didn't do it and she does it, she can remember that one for the whole of her life. But the man or our fathers will be doing it for life, right? 
and they never even think about it because by nature it's like that. And you see, women in Islam are queens. Allah has made it that way. Westerners didn't see it to be that way. And they see that men are the ones who have to work and they have the ones who have to do this and that and therefore the women shouldn't work. Yeah, the women shouldn't work not because they don't need to work, because they are queens and therefore they need to be served. In Islam, no woman is required as a responsibility with the responsibility to handle her husband or to take care of her father or to even to take care of her own son or to take care of her own mother. It's not a responsibility of a woman to do it in Islam. But it's a responsibility of a man to take care of first yourself, your wife, your son or your child, to take care of your mom, to take care of your father, to take care of your own brothers if they are weak, to take care of the community and to take care of the nation for a man. But for the woman, it's only to take care of herself. There is one hadith that says, if a woman is able to take care of her salat and her fasting and her husband's household, she will go to Jannah. What about you, the man? Your list is exhaustive. And you see, this is how Allah has made it. In Islam, if a woman has money and she chooses not to feed her child or not to use the money to give it to her husband who doesn't have, it's not a sin. If she has the money, she doesn't use it to give it to anyone. Even if the husband, let's say, doesn't have it and she chooses not to give him her money, it's not a sin. If she does it, she has greater rewards. Based on a hadith, I don't have the time to explain here, but I will explain inshallah maybe tomorrow. But for a man, regardless of how rich, let's say your wife is, the little you have, you must give. You, to you is a must. Because it's a responsibility on the shoulders. For your own child, you must give. Not giving is a sin, especially if you have. If you don't have, Allah says in the Quran, لِيُنْفِقُ ذُو سَعَةٍ مِنْ سَعَةٍ وَمَنْ قُدْرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ فَلْيُنْفِقْ مِمَّا أَتَاهُ اللَّهِ لِيُنْفِقُ ذُو سَعَةٍ مِنْ سَعَةٍ Let the one who is having, who is sufficient to give what he can give. But the one who has, who has it but is not sufficient, then give out of what you can give. That's what Allah says in the Quran, in terms of infaq. But that is to the man, not to the woman. To the woman, there is no mention of infaq. It's only mention of sadaqah, if she has it, and she is intended to give. But you see, a woman given, when a woman has it and she gives, she is ethical. For a man, when you have and you give, to you is legal and ethical. When a woman has it and she chooses not to give, she is just not ethical, but is not legal. For a man, is both legal and ethical. And that is talking about this, this particular verse, men and women. In terms of righteousness, they have same rewards. But when it comes to the aspect of responsibility, men have more responsibility than rights based on the cognitive power Allah has given us. But women have more rights than responsibilities. And this permeates in every aspect of Islam, even including inheritance. In inheritance, when Allah says in Surah Al-Nisa, that one portion for a female and two portions for a male, again, some people said, how can it be so unjust? Man takes, the man in the family takes two and the lady takes one. It's just, why? Because the man's two is for him to share. But the woman's one is for her to keep. Women are receivers and keepers. Men are givers and providers. All right? And givers and providers is in everything. Just talk about it from A to Z. You give. Even your own body doesn't have anything to take. That's why you can just not be a gay. All right? You have to be straight. That's how Allah has created us. And therefore, when it comes to the aspect of providing, Providing is naturally a doing or an act which is a responsibility Allah has placed on the shoulders of men. Not doing it is a sin. And going back to the verse, Allah says, 
وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلٍ Allah has made us into tribes and nations. And you see, when you talk of, when you look at the aspect of the cognitive and the affect, if all of us sitting here, the brains and the heart of all of us are taken and lined up here, I don't think any best medical doctor can tell this is for a white man, this is for a black man, and this is for a yellow man. Can someone do it? No, because all of them are of the same shape and size, perhaps no same, similar shapes and sizes, and all have red color of their blood. No one has a golden color because you are from a royal family. It's going to be red. Unless if it's green, then we know you are a snail or an Eskimo. But it can never be green. It's going to be red color because we all have the same, the engineering guys will say, the same first principle. When you go to the first principle, everything is the same, foundations. And therefore, based on that, Allah made the outer, in management we call it the surface level diversity. Whatever differences you see with your naked eyes, someone is tall, another one is short, one is fair, one is dark, one is blue, one is yellow, someone is stout, one is slim. These things you see with your eyes are called surface level diversity. And any discrimination on surface level diversity is both illegal and ethical, even in Islam even in Islam, is forbidden. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has been reported to have said in a hadith, or came call, he says, لا فضل لعربي على أعجمي ولا أعجمي على عربي إلا بالتقوى That the Arab has no value better than the non-Arab, or the non-Arab has no better value than the Arab except with the fear of Allah. And this is exactly the verse continues to say in support or in concurrence with what the Prophet has said. He says, Inna The best amongst you on the side of Allah is the one who is best in terms of piety. And piety here is an act of the affect, of the heart. Allah uh, Rasulullah says in a hadith, At taqwa ha huna, wa ila sadri marat. That fear of Allah or taqwa is here. And he showed, and he pointed to his heart three times. So taqwa is here, and what is taqwa? To end with, because of the time, according to Imam Ali, radiallahu anhu, Sayyidina Ali says, At-taqwa hiya al-khawf min al-jalil, wal-hukm bil-tanzil, wal-qana'atu bil-qalil, wal-istihidad al-yawm al-rahil. What is taqwa? What is fear of Allah? Or what is Allah consciousness? He says, al-khawf min al-jalil, fear of Allah. The fear here is not fear of something that you run away. No, but fear of someone that you are feeling even shy to do something that he didn't approve of. Al-Hukm Tanzil, to be able to, you know, apply the law of what, is, has, what has been revealed, which is the Quran. Well, Qana'at bil Qalil means to be sufficient with the little Allah has given you. والاستعداد اليوم الرحيل and to live in a state of readiness to meet Allah in this particular issue of taqwa there is nothing about gender differences male and female are the same but when it comes to the aspect of responsibility the men have more responsibility than rights or more yes and women have more rights than responsibilities and therefore we have equity in this situation and equality in terms of rewards whatever we have said which is good may Allah give us a reward of it and whatever it is which is an error may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me and forgive all of us and guide all of us subhanakallahumma bihamdik nashhadu la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh